Sheriff's office. This is Ray Teal with Channel 10 and El Dorado again. How's it Sheriff Dumplin? Can't seem to find time to return any of my calls. Now listen, I think the sheriff made it clear. He don't want this hatchet man thing blowed out of proportion. Okay, I just asking you, don't chew my head off. Sheriff Dumplin, the TV reporter's on line too. I'll handle it, Tommy. Now he knows I don't want him calling here. Yeah, Ray. Better make it snappy. What steps have you taken to investigate the latest murder victim, Miss Anita Banks? And what about the live on camera interview and the statement you promised me? Oh, I ain't gonna film no interview or nothing else. No, I don't wish to make no statement as yet. That's what I hate about big towns like El Dorado. Things here in Hampton shouldn't interest them. Now should they, Ray? Now look, I've already promised our viewers some sort of information concerning this Hatchet Man case. I'm not playing Sandy Claus to you or your viewers. Is that clear, Mr. Television Personality? Just how long have you been a sheriff anyway? I wish some women would get butchered up down El Dorado way. Maybe the press would lay off of me a little. You talk like a crazy man. I got an election coming up, you know. I ain't got time of running all over creation, neither. For Penny Davis and myself, this has been EHS News and Views. Leave the mess down for just five minutes, please. Says here, Ronald Reagan is going to run against President Carter after all. So we see on television now. Why don't they elect somebody and get it over with? Rusty, ain't there no news on those girls yet? Says here, the hatchet man, still at large. The reward on his whereabouts is went, has went up to $12,000. Cut it up, Mary Lou. Hurry. I repeat, earlier this afternoon, the body of Miss Anita Banks was found north of Hampton. It is believed that the hatchet man of Calhoun County has claimed the life of his fourth victim in less than a two-month period. Miss Banks was 19 years of age and was currently an employee of the Dubwells toy shop. I can see she was a cute little old girl. We hope within the hour to have a live on camera interview with Sheriff Doyle Dumplin of Hampton concerning the hatchet man. That's right, shoot him. Pump him in the belly, let him bleed. I bet you a Coca-Cola is a Chinese. nigger. 
I bet he is too. What does he mean having his way with them young girls? And then just cut them up. Now Mary Lou, you don't know he had his way with them no such thing. Well you heard the news there, didn't you? Ah oh, dang. I'd trade my place in hell just so you'd listen a little better. I don't know who's worse, you or your fat mouth mama. I don't like us living this close to a cemetery. Just look out the window and there it is. Just look at it. Hello? Hello, Linda Kay. What you doing? What you wearing? <gasps> who, who is this? No, it ain't Joe Hollis. Let's pretend we're young doves and just Bill and Coo. <gasps> I'm sorry, but you must have the wrong number. I know about the affair you've been having with a married man. <gasps> and you ought to treat me right. If you call here again, I'm going to call the sheriff's office. Guess what? I'm not wearing any underwear. Are you in the body functions? <laughs> Meet me in the front of the corner cafe. I mean it. Move, girl. Linda Kay, can you talk? Hold on a minute, Rusty. Till Miss Ears get through listening. You're not the only one that pays rent here, you know. You don't know just how temporary you really are. Rusty, I don't know how much longer I can pretend. I miss you so. We'll be together. You'll see. It's easy for you to say you love me. Truth is, I feel you love your wife, too. Life where Mary Lou is born. She's born. Rusty, you know as well as me. She'll never let you go. All this publicity about this hatchet man is giving me ideas. That's one sure way of getting rid of Mary Lou for good. Sure. Sure, Rusty. Sure. All I need now is a plan and a hatchet. And I think you know the plan. Yeah, it's all over but the crime, and I ain't gonna cry.
I really appreciate your stopping by and letting me know. I'm not so sure I've done you a favor. I can handle the rest of my own way. Mary Lou, whatever happens here tonight, don't mention my name. Don't mention my name. I know how to deal with Rusty. My offer still goes. If you ever get fed up with all men, like I did, I've got a place for you. My heart has a place for you. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Think it over. I'll be around when you need me. I think you need me now. I'd like to speak with Mr. Rusty Bland, please. Rusty's at work. He should be in around 5.30 or 6. That's just enough time, sister. I feel one more killing's in order. After the county's good and shook up again, three or four days before the election, I'll pick up me a Chinese, pin these killings on him.
Yep, they'll pat me on the back. It'll be easy. Easy screep for me. Easy screep. Dearest Rusty, for a long time now, things hasn't been right between us. Now I know why. This morning, Linda Kay's roommate dropped by to see me and share with me a nice little parable. She only confirmed what I'd already suspected. I've reached the end of my rope here today, Rusty. You and that bar hopping slut, Linda Kay. When you read this letter, I'll be over you for good. Rusty Bland, you're a no good son of a B, bye, bye, bitch. This special report was just called in from Hampton, Arkansas. Authorities say only moments ago, Sheriff Doyle Dumplin was forced into a final showdown with the Hatchet Man. The sheriff had no choice but to inflict a quick but fatal headshot. The Hatchet Man was killed instantly. His name is still being withheld until his parents can be notified. But we can say this. The Hatchet Man was a black male and was nine years of age. Is this right? One final comment. I feel this may be the proper time to close this case of the Hatchet Boy. <laughs>